Good morning, team. Told you I'm not gonna forget. Team the Centaur Ian here. So you might be wondering why am I looking like such a caveman? Oh, uh, blood. Um, so what happened was uh I use a like a face shaver clipper, and then I use something else. I'm gonna buy it again later just so I can explain it to you guys. But okay, black black people have a problem. Uh, that sounds bad. Um, we have a hair issue, all right? Um, people say we have nappy hair or whatever, but we have curly hair. So typically most races, when they grow their hair, right? Where they, when the hair grows, it comes straight out of the follicle. Just pop, easy, shaves clean. They could use, they could use like straight razors, all that kind of stuff. I used to try and use straight razors. I would get razor bumps. What happens is that the hair comes out of the follicle and it curls in. Okay, that's why you can see my eyelashes. You can't see my eyelashes, but everything on me is curly. Um, but also, when I do shave, if I shave really, really close, I'll get really, really agitated razor bumps. I'll get like bumps under here, and like when I shave my head, I'll get bumps on the back of my head. It's, it's unsightly. Um, so, I've been letting my hair grow out a little bit, um, and my facial hair grow out a little bit. I've been kind of bumming it out, um, not on purpose, but just because I needed to let my skin recover so that I could go nice, bald, black, Mr. Clean, Luke Cage-esque again, um, which is going to happen today. But uh, first, we're going to head to BJJ. Uh, actually, I, I said I was going to go twice this week, but I think I'm going to go three times. I'm going to go this afternoon or this morning, and then I'm going to go again on Friday morning along with working out on that day, but I'm only going to do the technique portion. I'm not going to spar. Sparring is what takes the most energy. I'm not going to end up doing that. So let's stop talking about my hair and about that, and let's just go roll. What's up, everybody? So I told you guys I would. <laughs> I told the team. <laughs> I told the team that I was going to explain to you guys what's going on with my competition taper um, and what exactly it is that I'm doing. Let me adjust this so it's on my face. So um, the software that allows you to like uh, share your screen with everybody else's or record your screen, it's, it's glitchy and it doesn't like the resolution isn't very high, so what I decided to do is I'm just going to share with you guys um, exactly my numbers, exactly my programming, how I programmed uh, the taper. Uh, so what you can do is actually you can access it and view it on Google Drive, um, and I'm just going to talk about the general big ideas and what's going on 
right now. So you'll notice that there are, you see I have it right in front of me, there are five weeks to it. There was actually supposed to be four weeks. <laughs> when I made it, uh, I, I anticipated the meet was one week before it actually was. So, uh, what, that's why the, you have a week one, okay, and then there's a week two, and then there's a week three that intensifies from week one. Now, let me explain that. I did week one. I realized that the meet wasn't four weeks out. It, was, it wasn't three weeks out from there. It was four weeks out. So, I input that week two, and that week two was supposed to be a slight volume taper from week one, meaning that the total volume decreased by a substantial amount, um, but I kept the intensity for all of the lifts fairly high um, because what's, what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to manage fatigue. I'm still trying to overreach a little bit, meaning I'm still trying to hit pretty heavy numbers that I really, some numbers I haven't done before. For example, on week two, which was the taper week, I've never actually benched one by two at 355, even though four by four at 315 was programmed. I just felt really good that day and I felt it was something that I could hit with um, with reasonable success. And it ended up being maybe like an RPE eight. You know, I felt like I had maybe two reps left in the tank. So that means that there, there's a lot in there for my bench. Um, but so week two is a volume taper, meaning volume was decreased from week one, but the intensity was still kept fairly intense. Now week three, okay, that's on the programming. Week three, intensifies from week one and week two. So week three is actually what's going on right now. It's gonna be the most intense week of the whole competition peak slash taper. Um, today, actually, I'm heading into the gym to bench five by two, five, five by two at 340. Um, and you'll also notice above all of these cells where the percentages that I have are, I also say the RPE I want this to be around. So my bench, I want it to be around an RPE 7.5 to 9.5. So if I feel really good today, and that five by two is moving really, really fast. And I feel like I can move up in intensity, meaning I can move up in weight without becoming too fatigued. I might go ahead and I might bench multiple. It happened again. Okay. RPE is rate of perceived exertion. I don't know how far I went talking about this, but we're going to have to splice this up. So it sounds like it was done in one take, even though the memory card ran out of space. Okay. So. RPE is very good for lifters to use because, first off, it allows the lifter a little bit of freedom, uh, depending on how they feel on day on a day-to-day -day basis. Let's say, like maybe they weren't hydrated enough, or maybe they didn't eat enough. Uh, they could work with a volume that still feels as intense as it's supposed to feel on that day. So, let's say they have an RPE eight, uh, you know, four by eight at seventy or eighty-two percent. That's supposed to be an RPE 8. Uh, and let's say that they work with the load and it feels like an RPE 10. Maybe instead they'll work at 4x8 at 75% and still feel the same kind of fatigue bound. The problem with the RPE, um, in some ways, some people program RPE by just saying, okay, you're going to work with this at RPE 6, and that's it. Like, they, like the, the problem with like working with only RPE is that sometimes lifters aren't used to the feeling of fatigue um, and they don't know what they're actually able to push they don't they they they're not used to feeling fatigued so let's say that a certain load feels like an RP 10 to them even though it actually may be moving like an RP 7 or 7 or 6 this is why I always make sure to program in percentages or base percentages um, for that RP to make sure that I at least move a certain center, uh, a certain amount of weight so um, I I make sure that RPE along with the percentage um, that I'm going to be moving that day is there so that I know what I'm going to be doing I, I'm pretty like I think that the main athletes I can get away with utilizing mainly RPE are elite level athletes that understand how true fatigue actually feels um, because most lifters aren't used to having a uh, very, very light, or like a very heavy load on their back that's around 95 or whatever percent, um, and they may just perceive it, see it's exactly rate of perceived exertion, they may just perceive it as an RPE 10 when it's really moving, and it is an RPE 8. Uh, so that's why I do that. Now, second thing, uh, I want to talk about the whole theme. Donna, can you lower that a little bit, please? Sorry. I want to talk about the whole theme of this whole peak uh, and, and the whole idea here, the big picture, and, and like I mentioned before, I hate saying that, is you always want to look at the big picture of everything that's going on. Yes, you could nitpick at little percentages here and there, but what is the big picture? The big picture of this competition peak and taper is to dissipate fatigue. And over time, I'm going to be tapering the volume 
but I'm going to be keeping the intensity of my lifts pretty much up here the whole time. Intensity, percentage of one rep max, I wanna keep that skill because that is what I need to be able to do on the platform. But what is going to have me more fatigued over time? Increased volume. So what am I doing over time? By week four and week five of my peak, I am actually lowering my volume so that because my volume is being lowered, my fatigue also dissipates. And this all means that by the time meet day comes, my skill of being able to move high intensity loads, one reps, um, or, or single, uh, or, you know, single reps, um, is here. My skill is here. Okay. My fatigue is here. Um, my volume is also down here and my ability to actually perform these lifts on meet day is very going to be very very high that's the big idea so no matter what kind of volume you work with you want to make sure that when you're making yourself a competition peak and a competition taper um, that you program it in a fashion that two or so weeks out you're not working with as much volume that you were in your prior training cycles or in the beginning of that taper that the volume is sometimes maybe even almost halved, but the loads that you're working with are still up here, okay? One week out, don't stop working out. Mark and I talked about this. He was saying how like individuals can become very detrained in one week and you don't want that to happen. So I still have loads that I'm working with a week, the week right before the meet so that on the day that I'm going to perform, it's not a totally foreign thing to me. You guys have had, I know the team has had times where, you know, you take a week off, you come back, you try and do a one red max, like shit. Everything feels crazy. You don't want that to happen on meet day. So you want skill to continue to be high um, and you, you don't want to stop doing that. So I'm still working out the week before the meet. Um, but that's also why I'm getting rid of BJJ the week before. And two weeks out, I'm only going to do BJJ once because again, the whole idea is to have fatigue dissipate, lower training volume, keep intensity high so that you can perform on meet day. Hopefully this helped you out. Hopefully having access to this likes to have a good idea of how I'm doing things and how you can do things for yourself too. This is Nsima the Centaur Yang from Break the Bar. Everyone, be an anomaly. I hope this all recorded and I'll talk to you all very, very soon. It recorded.